Okay, hi all. Um, I just wanted to finish off and to go through again as was what we did in the class earlier today. And again, just as a refresher, we're doing the 2007 tabular statement question. It's uh, question four in the 2007 paper. So, and we're just going to do the May, August, December, and I'll try and do it in one video. If not, it might be broken into two. So, uh, for the purposes of this, I've just created uh, part of the tabular statement. So I've left out all of the other months in the very beginning, uh, the the values that uh, there were at the start of the year on the first of uh, the first. So I'm just going to do the the last part of it. Okay, and also I've put the bank up on the top because in the class this morning you you said that most of you had it on top. Okay, uh, so. Uh, notice as well, I've left a few blank spaces above, a few blank spaces below in case we need to introduce any assets or liabilities, and we will need to. Um, so, having a look first at the May one, and this is something that comes up in every tabular statement question, um, in different figures of course, but uh, same type of uh, same type of transaction. So, received a bank statement on May 31st, showing a direct debit of 3,000. So a direct debit means money has gone out of your account to the tune of 3,000. So a direct debit is always money going out. And then it also showed a credit transfer received. So a credit transfer is just when money is transferred from one account to another. And if it's a credit transfer received, it means that money came into your account from somebody else's account. It was digitally transferred from somebody else's account into your account. So you had money going out, 3,000, money coming in, 2,500. Next thing is, what are they for? Well, the 3,000 euros for the money going out was for advertising, an expense you were paying for advertising. That's fine. The credit transfer received, the money coming in, was to cover 10 months rent in advance. Now, if it's, um, if it's uh, money you're getting for rent, it means that you are actually renting out a part of your... Um, of your premises to somebody as opposed to the rent that you would pay an expense. This is actually a gain, um, this um, rent receivable, we call it. Okay, so money going out for advertising, money coming in for uh, rent. Now, um, first thing we'll do is we'll deal with the money going out for advertising, the 3000. So this is how I'd like you to approach it. I'd like you to take the easy part of it first, which is uh, if you paid 3000 euros out, uh, then your bank goes down by 3,000. That's as simple as that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a minus 3,000 in the bank in the May column. But um, I, as I explained earlier, uh, I'm going to put um, two figures into the one box here. So I'm going to leave it up kind of high to leave room for another figure to go in. But it's 3,000 going out, so minus 3,000 from my bank. Okay. Uh, then the... Uh, to balance that, I suppose, we need to put in another figure somewhere else here, uh, uh, along along here. Now, we need to figure out, first of all, what is the 3,000 for? The 3,000 was for advertising, which is an expense. So that's the first thing. The next thing we need to figure out is, um, what, uh, after having paid that 3,000, what uh, will it the advertising look like at the end of the year on the 31st of the 12th. So in other words, um, we look at it's 3,000 you pay to cover advertising for the year ended 31st of the 5th, 2007. Well, the thing is, your tabular statement is just up until the end of 2006. So if you're paying advertising into 2007, it means at the end of 2006, last day of 2006, you should have advertising prepaid for next year because you have paid some for 2007 and we know you need to figure out what is advertising prepaid well it's an asset isn't it in which case it must go in up here okay so advertising prepaid okay so the next thing we need to figure out is um what am I going to put in here, which along with this here is going to mean that I would have the same total above as I would have below because the totals must be the same all the time. And I suppose I should say as well is that it's going to be 3,000. It's always going to be the same figure because it was 3,000 for advertising. All you need to figure out is, am I putting in a plus 3,000 or a minus 3,000? So if you uh, if you put in, let's just see what would happen. If you put in a plus 3,000 here, you'll have minus 3,000, plus 3,000. Your total will be zero. 
and down here because you've nothing put in your total will be zero so that would work out perfectly so a plus three thousand would work but just let's test and see if you put in a minus three thousand here what would you get minus three thousand minus three thousand is minus six thousand here and you have a total of zero down here so that wouldn't work so it must be plus three thousand in here okay now the next part of it is it's uh, credit transfer received money came into your bank account to the tune of 2500 so let's do the easy part first that means your bank account has gone up by 2500 because you got 2500 euros in so we're going to put it in the bank here 2500 as a plus because it's your bank account is going up by that amount now the one thing to say is if you were looking at the solution online okay you would see uh, that the uh, they don't have both figures in like we do. It's fine to put in the two figures, but they may just have, instead of putting in minus 3 and plus 2,500, they may have added these two together, and a minus 3,000 plus 2,500 would give you a minus 500. So if they had their bank up here, they may have put in just minus 500. If they have their bank down here, which they do, I suppose, the Department of Education solution has the bank down here, they will have a plus 500 because even though in total your bank is going down by 500 because it's an overdraft the overdraft is going up by 500 so uh, your solution uh, in the in the online that you'll see from the department of education will have bank down here plus 500 but this is perfect as well nothing wrong with that you as i say bank is the only one that you're allowed to either put up or uh, up above or down below so now back to our um, bank, we put in the plus 2,500. Now what I'd like you to do is imagine that that minus 3,000 and plus 3,000 isn't there. And all we're dealing with at the moment is this plus 2,500 in the bank. Right, let's figure out first, where is the other entry going to go with that 2,500? Well, it was credit transfer received for 2,500 to cover 10 months rent in advance from May the 1st. OK, so you need to work out what is it going to look like? What's the rent receivable uh, situation going to look like at the end of the year? Well, 10 months in advance from May 1st. Again, I would just use my fingers here and I would say uh, that's paying for all of May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. That's just eight. January, February. So you're going to be paying for two months of next year. So if that's the case, then you are going, or sorry, you're not going to be paying, you're going to be receiving money or you have received um, money for rent for next year. So that's money that was paid in advance to you for next year. So on the 31st of the 12th, somebody will have paid you in advance for January and February of 2007. So at the end of the year, you will have rent receivable prepaid, which we know is a liability okay so we don't have it down here already so we have to uh, include it so rent receivable prepaid okay so that just tells us we need to put something in here and now as i said imagine that 3000 isn't there and the minus 3000 is there and you just have this 2500 up here what would i need to put in here to make the total on the top be the same as the total on the bottom well if these two weren't here then the total on the top would be plus 2500 and the only way to get that is on the bottom is to put plus 2500 in here and again like i said really all you're doing with these ones is you're trying to figure out is it a plus or a minus 2500 we're putting in and in this case a plus and then if we total it up well everything in here just adds up to 2500 the three of these together add up to well the plus three and the minus three cancel and you've got 2500 and that's may done now there's that's not a lot of thinking done there because there is more to be done with that may entry what we do is we just kind of fudge this and put the figures in like this every time and then we fix it up in the second december column uh, when we get to it okay so i'm going to do a little bit more i think i'll definitely have to break this into two videos but the next part then is um, august it says a payment of 700 was received from a debtor whose debt had previously been written off and who now wishes to trade with harris limited again so we'll do the easy bit first again a payment of 700 euros was received if we received 700 euros our bank account goes up by 700 euros as simple as that so in the bank section we put in a plus 700 in august Okay, we've got 700 more euros in our bank account. Perfect. Now it says uh, that that 700 euros represents 70% of the original debt. Uh, 
So what we're saying is this debtor here, this person owed us money and uh, they couldn't pay us and they uh, declared bankruptcy. We wrote off that debt and we said, oh, they're, they're never going to pay us. They're bankrupt. We'll just write that off as a bad debt. And then suddenly maybe they came into some money for some reason and they decided to start trading again. And we're not obviously going to be trading with them again if they're, you know, they owed us money and they couldn't pay us last time. So the only way we'll start trading with them again is if they pay us that old debt that they owed us. And they said, look, here's 700 euros. It's not the full amount, but if you'll take that, which is 70%, and we'll pay the rest of you of the debt, it says in February 2007, next year. Okay, so 70% is 700. We could do our little calculations, you know, divide 700 by 70 and multiply by uh, 30 to get the other 30%. And we would see that it was 300. So the debt in total originally was uh, 1000 euros. So if the other amount that they said they'd owe us is 300 euros, well, when somebody owes us money, we call them a debtor, isn't it? So our debtor's figure really is just uh, the total amount of uh, all the money owed to us by the different debtors. So if they, if there's another person coming to us and say, look, I owe you an extra 300, then our debtors should go up by 300. OK, so on the top in total, we've got 1000. And on the bottom to balance or to get the same total in the profit and loss, we put in a thousand. 1000 and uh, what I should say is if this were a trading profit and loss it would go into the trading profit and loss account as a gain and we would call it uh, bad debt recovered you know somebody who came back and paid off their bad debt it would be a gain so it would be a, a plus in the profit and loss it would increase the size of our net profit uh, but another way of looking at it is look we have gained a thousand euros from this guy coming back to us we've gained 700 euros in cash and we've gained this asset this extra 300 euros in debtors which is an asset so we're better off to the tune of a thousand euros after this person coming back to us so that's that then the next one is December. Now, as I say, I have two December columns. One, the first December column is just so that we can do this December here. And the second column over here is going to be so that we can start out May properly because we didn't, uh, we were not finished with it just yet. So looking at the question, it says, in December, the building's depreciation charge for the year is 2% of book value. The depreciation charge should be calculated from date of valuation and date of purchase. The total depreciation charge on vehicles for the year was 20,000. So we'll start with the easy one. They tell us what the depreciation on vehicles for the year was, so we don't have to calculate it. So we'll put that in first. So our depreciation on vehicles was 20,000. So we go to our uh, vehicles depreciation line and we're going to increase our aggregate depreciation by 20,000. But the thing is, if we want to increase depreciation, since we write depreciation as a minus up here, to make it a bigger minus, if you like, um, not very mathematically sound saying it like that, but if you want to make it a bigger minus, we have to put in uh, the annual depreciation as a minus 20,000 there. Okay, now what we do to balance that is we go down to the profit and loss. Where is it? Profit and loss here. And we also put, and again, because we're going to have two figures in this profit and loss, we put in a minus 20,000 so that we'll have the same total, if you like, minus 20,000, minus 20,000 so far. And the reason we put it into the profit and loss is a minus. Well, we know that annual depreciation, the yearly depreciation, if you like, on um, fixed assets goes into the profit and loss account as an expense. It goes in in the less expenses part of the um, profit and loss account, doesn't it? Uh, like we have depreciation of buildings, depreciation of machinery, depreciation of vehicles, whatever it happens to be, goes in there uh, each time. And what effect does it have when it goes in, in a, into the expenses? It has the effect of reducing your net profit, doesn't it? Because it gets subtracted from your gross profit, thereby making your net profit smaller. So, uh, this putting in a minus 20,000 here makes sense from that point of view, but also from the balancing your tabular statement point of view. So the second part of it then is, uh, let's go for the um, depreciation charge, the building's depreciation charge for the year to be 2% of book value. So I'm going to do the actual calculations over here because there's a little bit of work in that. The reason being, there are these buildings that you had at the start of the year, and then there's also these other buildings that you bought in February when you bought the adjoining business. So we need to do get the depreciation for these buildings and also for the for these buildings, and then we need to add them together. So these buildings, first of all, 520,000. 
520,000. Okay. Um, the only thing is, though, on the 1st of the 1st, 2006, Harris revalued land and buildings at 520,000. So that's actually land and buildings. And this valuation included land now valued at 80,000. So we need to subtract 80,000 from this to get what the buildings figure is because we don't depreciate land. We only depreciate the buildings. So if we subtract that 80,000, first of all, we get this to be 440,000. Okay. And then if we want to work out the depreciation on these buildings, well, it's 2% of book value. Okay. So multiplied by 0 0.02 to get 2%. And then we don't have to do any more, any number of twelfths or anything like that, because we did the revaluation on the 1st of January. So we'll have an entire year worth of depreciating those buildings. So we just have to get 2% of that. So that comes to 8,800. Okay. The second one then is um, we look at the buildings that you got in February and those buildings were 300,000. So write them down here. Oops. 300,000. Again, it's 2% per annum. But this time uh, we didn't have these for a full year. So per annum means per year. But because we only got these buildings on the 1st of February. January was already gone, so one month of the year was gone. So we only owned these buildings for 11 months of 2006. So we've got to multiply this by 11 twelfths, 11 out of the 12 months. And when we do that, I'll just get the calculator here, although I think it was 5,500 when I did it earlier in class. I'm pretty confident it was. So what's that, 13, 14,000? 300 then is your um, total depreciation on buildings and again just like the vehicles we find the depreciation on land and buildings line here and then we put in where are we it's here minus 14,300 so we put it in as a negative it's not reducing the depreciation because the depreciation goes in as a minus in the first place it just increases the minus amount if you like and to balance that down below we put in a minus 14,300 in the profit and loss and so your total above and below will be uh, 34,300 minus of course and down here minus 34,300 and um, just to note that if you were looking at this solution in the um, in the State Exams Commission, it'll look a bit different because they put their two December columns together in one so they just have more entries in here, which changes the um, the total. So theirs is going to look a little bit different. Uh, in the next video, then, I'll do the last December column and the totaling.